what's up friends i hope your studies must be going well and uh, today we will be doing objective 1 from hc verma and the name of chapter is circular motion and the name of your host is hitesh sharma okay so let's start with the first question when a particle moves in a circle with uniform speed uh, what happens its velocity obviously change because the direction change and its acceleration also changes because the direction changes we can have a look at the diagram okay just hold yes the velocity at bottommost point is towards right and acceleration is upward towards the center but when it reaches this point velocity is upward and acceleration is towards left again towards the center but again both are changing their direction so both are varying in the next question there are two cars masses m1 m2 moves in a circle with radius r1 r2 and if they complete the circle in equal time their angular speeds will be same so their ratio will be one because angular velocity or angular speed is nothing but angle covered upon time tickled in one complete revolution both will cover 2 pi and it is given that they take equal time so obviously the ratio of 2 will be 1 in the next part uh, car A moves at constant speed on a road as shown and we have to find we have to compare N A and N B again the speed is constant but we can observe that radius of curvature radius at A is smaller as compared to B more flat the curve more flat the curve uh, larger will be its radius so B is flatter so its radius is large this is a sharp curve so radius will be small so let's look at the solution at any convex surface we can say uh, as the center of the cur uh, circular part is below so mg minus n will provide you the centripetal acceleration so n will be equal to this so if r is small you can say n will be small because mv square by mv square by r will be large and mg minus uh, large value will be small so if r is small down with, uh, downward arrow signifies small so n will be small so obviously uh, if r is small in this part a obviously r is small so n a will be small than n b okay in the next question there is a particle of mass m is observed from an inertial frame it is noted that it is observed from an inertial frame of reference and it is moving in a circle of radius r with uniform speed the centrifugal force on it will be zero simply zero because centrifugal force is a pseudo force which is to be applied only when the observations are taken from a non-inertial frame okay as the observation are taken from an inertial frame the pseudo forces or the centrifugal force will be zero in the next part a particle of mass m rotates in a uniform uh, with a uniform angular speed omega it is viewed from a frame rotating about z axis uh, with a uniform angular velocity omega naught omega naught is the speed of the frame from which observations are being taken and omega is the angular speed of the particle so the centrifugal force obviously centrifugal force or pseudo force is mass of the object which is being observed into acceleration of the frame so acceleration of the frame is nothing but omega square omega naught square a so the pseudo force or the centrifugal force should be m mass of the object into acceleration of the frame which is omega naught square a okay next part is a particle is kept fixed on a turntable rotating uniformly as seen from the ground the particle goes in a circle its speed is 20 centimeter and acceleration is 20 centimeter per second square uh, particle is now shifted to a new position to make the radius half of the original as the omega will remain same and the speed of the particle can be given by v equal to r omega you can have a look at the solution so that is omega of the turntable is constant so using v equal to r omega and acceleration is equal to r omega square when we reduce r to half both v and a will reduce to half so 
their initial values were 20 20 so they will become 10 10 each in the next question there is a water in a bucket which is whirled in a vertical circle with a string attached to it the water does not fall down even when the bucket is inverted at the top of its path uh, so with that information what we can conclude okay so let's look at the diagram of this is the bucket and it is rotating in this direction this is the center this bottommost point is the center and uh, at the top there are two forces mg obviously downwards and normal from the uh, they are normal from the bucket on the water we are uh, just observing forces on the water and obviously the acceleration of water will be in downward direction so we can write the equation n plus mg will provide you uh, the required centripetal force which is m e square by r so we can say as n is greater than or equal to 0 because water is not leaving contact with the bucket so n must be greater than 0 so in that case mg must be less than mv square by r because mg will be mv square by r minus n so mg must be less than mv square by r this is the observation we can get from this diagram stone of mass m is tied to a string of length l which is rotated in a circle with other end of the string at the center the speed of the stone is v if the string breaks the stone will obviously move along the tangent because then there will be no centripetal force so it will move in a straight line along its velocity which is always tangential okay the next is a coin is placed on a rotating turntable it just slip if it is placed at a distance of 4 cm from the center if the angular velocity of the turntable is now doubled at what distance it will just slip so we can say on doubling the omega uh, the acceleration will become 4 times but as we know that it slips at 4 cm when we can say the maximum acceleration provided by the friction must be equal to radius into omega square which is at the moment of just slipping so when omega becomes 2 omega then again the maximum acceleration provided by the friction will be same mu g so the new r into 2 omega square okay because the omega has doubled so obviously r will become 1 by 4 times initially it was 4 centimeter just by comparing these two we can get 4 r as 4 so r will be 1 centimeter so the object or the coin will slip at 1 centimeter so it should be placed at a radius less than or just equal to 1 centimeter if it is placed more than at a distance more than 1 centimeter it will slip bound to slip okay next question is motorcycle is going on a overbridge of radius r the driver maintains a constant speed as the motorcycle is ascending on the overbridge the normal force on it okay this is a very non-intuitive question most of the students gave wrong answer to this so let's look at the solution this is an overbridge and the vehicle is moving from this point to the top by maintaining a constant speed so we can say at any general position uh, mg cos theta the component of mg towards the center will be mg cos theta minus n is equal to mac as mac remains same so we can write n equal to mg cos theta minus mac okay and on ascending obviously theta will become zero or theta will decrease so cos theta will increase so obviously normal will increase but we can always look that normal will be less than mg though it is increasing but from this position to that position it will remain smaller than mg okay in the next question there are three identical cars a b and c they are moving with same speed on the three bridges a goes on a plain bridge b on a convex upward bridge and c on a concave upward bridge and f a f b f b are the normal forces exerted by the car on the bridge when they are at the middle of the bridge so we have to compare these normal reaction forces so we can say let's say this is a bridge for a this is bridge for b and this is bridge for c their normal reactions we can calculate acceleration centripetal acceleration will be zero because the radius is infinite so n will be equal to mg for this point 
mg minus nb is this so nb is mg minus something mac and for this nc will be mg plus something so we can easily guess that nc is largest then na and M nb or force by car b on the bridge will be smallest so nc na and nb are the decreasing order in the next question a train a runs from east to west and another train of the same mass runs from west to east at the same at the same speed along the equator a presses the track with force f1 and b presses the track with force f2 this is a very very good question uh, in this exercise so we have to compare these forces so uh, let's say this is earth this is north pole this is south pole and earth is rotating from west to east direction and along equator the trains will be moving on this circle uh, train a will be moving from uh, west to east and train b will be moving from east to west so as train a and b are moving with same speed with respect to the ground but the speed of the trains will be different with respect to the axis the speed of train b will be more with respect to axis of rotation due to the rotation of earth as the train is moving with uh, the rotation of earth west to east so we can say velocity of train will v will be its velocity with respect to ground or its speed with respect to ground plus rotation speed of earth which is r omega okay so they will add because they have they are in the same direction so velocity of train b with respect to axis will be this and for a it will be this so uh, in the next diagram this is the top view okay uh, you have to um, understand it very carefully this is the north pole out of the plane and south pole is just into the plane and this is the equator this is basically the equator which is uh, appearing as a circle so the trains are moving on this circle mg will be obviously towards the center this is towards the center so and normal will be away from the center of the circular motion in which they are moving so we can say uh, for a mg minus n will be n ac so n is nothing but mg minus mv square by r as v is small for a n a will be large for a and v is small for uh, v is large for b we can say n will be small for b okay so again this is the top view and this is normal or oh, north pole and just below it south pole this is the equatorial circle and trains are moving like this and that okay if the earth stop rotating the apparent value of g on its surface as rotation has no effect on poles so g on poles will remain same but at any other latitude uh, rotation has some effect so at other points it will be changed so it will increase at some points and will remain same at some other points d will be the answer in the next part there is a rod of length l which is pivoted at one end and is rotating with uniform angular velocity t1 t2 be the tension at a distance l by 4 comma 3l by 4 from the pivoted end we have to compare these tensions so we can say that uh, this is t1 t1 is force responsible for more mass acceleration t1 has acceleration this uh, has to accelerate this much mass and t2 has to accelerate only m by 4 so obviously t1 will be greater than t2 then the next question tension in the string when the car is in air obviously both will be falling freely so the tension will be zero when the car is in air the next question we have to find that at what instant the tension will be equal to mg cos theta in a rotating pendulum having amplitude theta so we can say t will be equal to mg cos theta let at this position t and this will be mg cos theta and the centripetal acceleration will be towards center so if t is equal to mg cos theta then ac must be zero for that v must be zero and that will take place only at extreme positions so at extremes only t will be equal to mg cos theta at any other position t will be greater than 
एम जी कॉस्थीटा ओके थैंक यू